Glory be to the name of the Lord. Say, I'm the head. I'm not a tail. I am above only. I can't be beneath. In the name of Jesus, grace is upon me and I make progress with ease. So shall it be. Praise the name of the Lord. 1 Timothy 6, 12. It's a fight. A good fight of faith. So, the next thing you do is that then you begin to lay hold. So, what is the fight of faith? It's a fight you, you are won before you began. And we're going to see a major attribute of faith tonight. But we started talking about declaring war against the devil. And we, de we saw how prayer can be very, can be a major tool in fighting the devil. Especially when you mix it with fasting. He started telling us in first Samuel, or first, or Psalm 144, 1 to 2, that David said God taught him how to battle. So every believer must know how to fight. And in Psalm 44, verse 3, he said they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword. So a sword was used, but not a physical sword. And Hebrews 4, 11 to 12, the Bible described that the word of God is sharper than two sword. So, David learned how to war with God's word. In Deuteronomy 2.24, I showed us how our land inheritance or our land of inheritance is not empty. There are occupants there. And they won't, be, they won't back down because you have a fine face. The only thing they respond to is power. So, we must be ready to fight. And I told us in Joshua 24, verse 8, that this is a fight that we know is sure. Our victory is sure. So we are not going to a battle not knowing whether we will win or not. Joshua 24, verse 8. He I brought you into the land of the Amorite who dwelt on the other side of the Jordan, and they fought with you, but I gave them into your hand that you might possess their land. Somebody, you are possessing your inheritance in Jesus. Yeah. Second Corinthians 10 4 said the weapon of our warfare, they are not gonna. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. But mighty in God. For that's it has an assignment. For for. So we are picking this weapon up for a purpose. For pulling down. So there are things that the devil has erected that we pull down. And our weapon is not carnal. It's not our weapon is not uh, you mean it's not carnal, it's not it's not flesh. No. Somebody came to your office and said, I'll kill you. The next thing is you can't kill me, you begin to engage the person in fight. You now you started behaving carnally. The weapon of our warfare in that situation is not carnal. It's not, it's not physical. It's not what you can touch. But there's something you can engage for the pulling down. It doesn't matter how long that they have erected it. For the pulling down. For the pulling down. He said for the pulling down of strongholds. There can be some things that has been strongly holding you down for generations. But you can pull them down. Somebody tell anybody say you can pull them down. Oh, I can't ever say you can pull them down. Let me show you a major weapon in the book of Psalms 7, 9 to 13. Uh, Psalm 7 is one warfare psalm. That, as a matter of fact, from Psalm 1 to verse 7, they are warfare prayers. So you can engage them in your private time to use them to pray. And one of the strongest, um, one of the strongest prayer you can pray in the scripture, his book of Psalms, it's just full of prayers. No wonder David said, he taught my hand. So God taught me how to pray. So you just take them and take them back to God. 
Can we read together? Ready? Read. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. But establish the just. For the righteous God test the earth and mind. My defense is of God who saves the upright in heart. God is a just judge and God is angry with the wicked every day. If he does not turn back, he will sharpen. Is what? Is what? Semicolon. In fact, he's not even trying to. He said he bends his bow. Uh huh. He makes it ready. Somebody say, My mouth is ready to fight. Stop. Don't let anything happen to you. Hey, I don't know what to do. Be ready with your mouth to speak. He bends his bow and he's ready. Huh? What happens? He also spears, prepares for himself. What? Instruments of death. He makes his arrows into what? Very sharp. Verse 15, if you can read on. Behold, the wicked bring forth iniquity. Yes, he conceived trouble and bring forth false wood. He makes a pit and dug it out. And has fallen into ditch. You see, he has started talking. He has started using that instrument of death. So, you know why I'm reading this scripture? I started showing you that God have instruments to fight. There is instrument God used to kill, which is mouth. It's God's instrument of death. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. You can silence the wickedness of the wicked by speaking. And I'm not talking about some speaking, Father, deliver me from the oppressed. No. Everywhere they gather today, fire it gov them. The air they breathe is bringing bitterness into their spirit. If the enemy shoots with one arrow, throw 70. By the time they want to recover from the 70, you are thrown another 100. I'm telling you, sometimes as you are marching the floor, I say, I march them underfoot. I declare and declare they will not be able to rise. They will not have time for me because I press them down. As they drink water this morning, it goes to the wrong part of their body. It takes them to the hospital and I decree and declare. No enemy has my time because I give them assignment. In the name of Jesus. See, that is God's instrument of death. You don't speak, God can't move. You know what David said? David said, I will cut your head and feed it to the birds of the air. Oh, it's a blessing. No, he was speaking blessing. No, to me it's a blessing, but to them they see it as a cause. See, if they come against you in one way, what will happen to them? They flee. So the reason they are fleeing is because something makes them to flee. Your area must not become an area that is easy for enemy to creep into. Have you ever seen any hot fire burning and flying and say he wants to come and play around the, the meat you are roasting on it? So get fire around yourself. Get your environment so saturated with it that the enemy cannot just pounce on you anyhow. Somebody tell your neighbor, say, increase the fire. Say to someone, say, increase the fire. Spend one hour speaking, releasing word into the air. And anyone that, that touches you, touches fire, Bible says, I lay a stone. Anyone that goes against it is grounded to powder. Anyone that it goes against crumbles. In other words, you hit me, I hit you. Now trouble you hit. Stop living a beggarly life. That's not who you are. Tell anybody that's not who you are. So tell anybody, say, God, I have instrument of death. <laughs> we shared one prayer. Especially prayer in tongue. Fasting. Some people, their bellies, they are good. 11, this way they'll be checking time. Who should fast if not you? Let me tell you, but who should fast if not you? Are you where your mates are? He say, I don't take can't fast. They don't fast. That's why you are slow. They don't teach me everything. I learn from observation. If I notice something is working for you, I want to find out what that thing is. I hear somebody say, my secret is fasting. Ah, if fasting works for him, then he can work for me too. <laughs> that was their belly is their God. Belly. How can belly be your God? <laughs> you worship in the way you, you told you your tummy. If you can tell you your destiny like that, let them put a plate of food. You'll be salivating. Ah, food, my tongue. I don't play. You, have you ever had my food that say, I don't play with my tongue? 
Some men, if they want to ask a sister, they say, I don't play with my tummy. Oh, you came to the face of the earth to come and eat. You know what my mother used to call them? Abolun Jeku, Hit and die. See, that's what you came to do on it. Oh, yeah, eat. Eat. Your mates are doing great and mighty things. Do you know? Let me tell you something. Do you know? You know, I said something. I said, um, you can't really pray if your delight is not in the Lord. Go meet people who like purpose, who are purpose driven. You will see food in front of you in the morning. You are not fasting and you hate the food. You feel underachieved to eat. Have you been there before? You see food, you look like it's, it's, it's food again. Please take food away. Take food away. You know, when I was learning how to hear God back then in the university, they would serve food on the table. I would just get to the table. And as I take my spoon, I would just feel like, I, maybe in a minute they talk to myself or God or they talk to me. I don't know. I will just hear a voice like, wait upon me today, fast. I will just pack the food to the kitchen. I say, why are you taking this? Say, God, say I should wait. <laughs> Passion is too much. The battles of your destiny is it's not as easy as you thought. Who made it in your family? Look at it. You see that they don't go to school? Is life that hard? But somebody refused to wake up. My mom has been teaching me how to fast since we were in primary school. Every Thursday we used to fast. I remember how the lessons began. I can't forget. I remember those experiences. She used to give me food, break time. Because she was a teacher in that, um, that, that village primary school. So break time, she would give me food. And I realized that any time I'm, I don't know, I've always been like that. I don't learn really from people telling me things. Then I realized she doesn't used to eat. She would just put the food in front of me. She'd pray with me, then I'll eat. Then I realized she doesn't used to eat. Then I asked, why don't you eat? He said, no. She will not eat until after the school. So later I said, and my mommy was just a role model for me when I was growing up. I was very close to her as a child. because Maybe because I was the last one. So I would say, okay, if you will not eat, I will not eat. So she would pack the food back. So when we get to the house, we eat. Sometimes it's even Gary. A small portion of this. That was how I started learning how to fast from primary school. Secondary school, even when I was not born again, I was mixing with bad guys. Every Thursday, I will say fast. I will fast up on top of that bad boy. Fasting is not an option. If it is an option, maybe you don't need it. But for your journey, see, you can't be powerful as a child of God without fast. You can't. Whose face shone like the face of India? Moses. Who stood before the Lord for 40 days without food? Moses. You can't be at the valley misianing, doing everything you know how to do and you say you, you don't want to fast. Or you, don't want to, or, you, or you want to remain powerful. You can't. And please don't forget Esau. One plate of food. Mortgage is destiny. Can God even tell you sacrifice your lunch? Your dinner? You that can't fast the one. What happened if God said, I need you to wait upon me for three days without food? Is there anybody who does not like food? Except by discipline. You are wired to eat. Your, as a matter of fact, your body reacts. Your body is just like what fuel is to car. That's what food is to the body. Do you know the reason they perish in the wilderness? the generation that didn't enter Canaan land was because of food. Go check it. I will remember the, the cucumber. Cucumber. The cucumber of Egypt. Garlic. So they didn't make it because of garlic. They said, what is this thing we are eating? Manna. God brought them food of angel. They said they want, they want cucumber. Cucumber. Many times I'm reading, I'm like, ah, cucumber and garlic. <laughs> One day, the head man, I head man, I say, this man has said, this and this. Ah, 
they complain about everything. We, we say we want meat. And that manner is such a food that contains all the nutrients they need. They say we want meat. Go read Numbers 13. God became angry. Bible said God caused the wind to blow. And blow quite little the camp of Israel. It's as it's the distance at which the animals cover the ground is like going from here to Shagam. God gave them more than they wanted. Do you know what? They rushed it and they began to eat. Bible says, as they were eating, it was coming down from their noses. And they were dying there. The uncle cook, they were dying. Bible says, as the food was, as the meat was in their mouth, God became angry and struck them. More than half of them died because of food. Let me tap somebody beside you. Pee. Don't let food kill you. Tap. Are you tapping somebody? Obey, pastor. Tap the person. Say, don't let food kill you. You see where some people eat. <laughs> Mount, Mount, Mount Everest. Is he okay? Is he put? <laughs> is this one okay? Is he put? Portion is important. When they found out that the reason that if you go to the village, you see an average person, they eat a lot of food because many of them do hard work. You see their food pounded yam big. But most times they burn it because some of them can cultivate 200, 400 heaps of sand in one day. So when they sit down to eat, you are not like that. When they offer you bread, two slices, let me tap your neighbor and say, let's deal with that area. I'm doing it deliberately because days of glory is coming. Don't be a spectator. Deal with food. Food. Some people, when they see food, they want to break their fast. Maybe the problem is that cooler you used to carry. How many times you check that cooler? You check it. Is it still on? <laughs> Pastor, how did you know? I know you. <laughs> it's getting cold. Maybe as you eat it before, the thing is really, really cold. You check the cooler. You, when you see people eating, you, you carry your own cooler, you open them, you check, it's still 12, 12, 12. You lock it, 12 or 5, you come back again. Or the small biscuit you kept in your bag. Control your day. That biscuit is controlling your day. By the 1 o'clock, you look at the biscuit and look at the biscuit and look at the biscuit and look at the biscuit. Later, you just speak it to a kind of journey with one small cook that you have there. And it looks to you that you are satisfied. That is why you will know carnality is mad. That small thing can sustain. You know, the enemy just don't, just, just does not want you to focus. How can biscuits be the reason for you not to faint? My eyes turn it. My eyes turn it. Turn your eyes to turn it. If it's turning, turn it. <laughs> and like I said, sometimes if you have not fainted during fasting, you have not touched some realms. When God looks at you, can he see sacrifice? Stop doing things that are convenient. Even the fasting you are doing is convenient. Permit me, if you're a lady here, or you're someone that you're not a food person, by 12 or by 6, even if you have not eaten, it does not move you. Maybe your own fasting to touch God, you have to move it to 12. <laughs> I'm telling you, just David said, Can I give God what does not cost me something? For some people, fasting is not to break by six o'clock, is not uh, but you know some people by one their body is shaking. I'll complain about something to I was mentioning something to Mommy D. Baba just spoke from another place. Is he returned? What's wrong with food? When you are not fasting, at least eat. If not because I'm training myself not to take some things, I can eat a biscuit from morning to night. And deliberately in the days when GSE was starting, it's one of the training like again. I don't want food to control me. Who does not like to eat? Self-discipline. 
Because as natural as that food is, it's against the spirit. When, when your body is heavy, your spirit is tangible. I don't know why, but it's just a principle of the spirit. Anything the flesh likes is against the spirit. Some of you during fasting now, you, have, you will download many movies on your phone. So by the time I watch three, it will have been evening. <laughs> no, serious. Anything the flesh likes is against the spirit. The Bible calls it the en- is an enmity against the spirit. So, see how Hannah received some man. She didn't eat in Shiloh that year. That year. Sometimes you tell yourself some. What is exciting me? You cannot say, Did I not give you double portion? Double portion. Is that what I want? When everybody departed from Shiloh, he says, My time of Shiloh just opened. She will enter the temple. She has not eaten. Begin to pray in agony. Until Eli paid attention. So, what's wrong with this woman? Is she drunk? Why will the spirit lead Jesus to go and fast for 40 days? His fasting is not important. Did you remember John? I would say John didn't really eat. He was feeding only on honey and locusts all his life. No wonder he operated that power. <laughs> I said, Jesus said, this kind. <laughs> it's not by putting your hand in your pocket. He can he only respond to those who spend time with him upon the road. And look at the way he cast out the demon. But where was he coming from? Prayer place. Jesus went to pray one day and was coming and began to walk on water. Peter looked. It must be a ghost. Who walked on the water? The person coming from the place of prayer. There's a dimension you can't touch until there is a proper fellowship with God. You see Prophet Ezana also? She preserved the coming of Messiah practically by lifestyle of fasting. Bible says she was she, she was eighty four at that time, and her husband had died at the early age. She was a widow. She never she was a widow that had no child, and the Bible says she fasted till Christ came. So she fasted for more than sixty years of her life. So what is one twenty days fasting compared to somebody who fasted for sixty years? And me, I'm not prophetess now. Problem, you'll be a spectator to people's success. The same way her name was written in the scripture, no, but they will write your own too as someone who lived, who does not pay attention to destiny. If I thought your name would be written. Don't pray for new wine if you are not ready to change the container. Let me show you a scripture. And you'll be blessed. Luke 5. And this is just to wrap up what I've been talking about before I move to the next one. Luke 5, 33 to 39. Everybody, ready, read. Then they said to him, Why do the disciples of who? Uh huh. Fast of John. Huh? Let's go. Fast out. Fast out. Fast out. Often is there, right? And make prayers. And likewise, those of what? Even Pharisees. And but some boys they come and give on. No wonder they can't cast out any demon. And he said to them, Can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? In other words, there is party. They are serving food. You know, say people should be fasting. I know now. Jesus said, leave them. <laughs> the day will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. They will fast. See, pray. You better pray now so that you will not have to pray when there is trouble. Fast now so that there will not be a situation that we could say, ah, Jesus said, leave them. Peter will fast. <laughs> you see, fasting, because, because I'm here now, my presence carries a grace that they are all enjoying. 
By the time I leave this place, when they encounter destiny, they will know that they must need to stand for themselves. They will fast. Did they not fast? Ah, they fasted. In Acts 10, what do you see, Peter? He was there fasting. But when Jesus was here, did he fast? No. In other words, I can't fast for them. Now I'm fasting for them. Leave them. But next, guess what? Let's keep reading. I'm going somewhere then. 36. Then he spoke parables to them. No one put, watch your, no one puts a piece from a new garment on an old one. Otherwise, the new makes a tear. And also the piece that was taken out of the new does not match the old. No one put new wine into old wine skin. Or else new wine, new wine will burst the wine skin and be spilled. And the wine skin will be ruined. But new wine must be put into new wine skin. And both are preserved. He's talking about fasting. You know? And in this place, he's talking about new wine and old wine. That means there's a dimension of anointing in new wine you can never experience. Until you change the container. He said, the problem is container. Or watch something about container. This wine skin is talking about. He said, a new wine for a new wine skin. It's not another bottle. It's not another container. But did you know how they make new wine skin? How many of us have seen new wine, wine skins before? So you drink from me, you lock it up. So why they said you don't put new wine in old wine skin is because the new wine, that is what they call wine skin. So they said you don't put new wine in old wine skin because new wine is still very rich. Then old wine skins kept somewhere so, it has become sturdy. It's become hard. It's become hard. How many of you left, um, maybe you left a, a good leather shoe somewhere and you've not worn it for, by the time you want to wear it in most cases, it looks as if it's now tighter. It sh- shrinks in. and So, if you pour new wine into it, what happens into it is that it will try to expand it so it will begin to crack. Then at the end of the day, you will lose the wine and lose the wine skin. So how did they, what is it talking about in this place? That you need a new wine skin for a new wine. Now, this is how they make new wine, the, the old wine skin to become new wine. So what they do is that they soak it in water. So when they soak it in water, it becomes soft. Then they revive it. Then they take it to the fireplace and dry it. And they bring it back. And put new wine into it. So you now put new wine in new wine skin. So new wine skins are actually made out of a refurbished old wine skin. In other words, how you come does not matter. All you need to do is to soak yourself with God's word. Prepare that container in fasting. Demass yourself in the word. Immerse yourself in prayer. Then God can now pour a new wine into you. So your next level is an ability to yield. Ability to drop off some things. See, I will drop off food. I will drop off this. I will drop that. I will soak myself in the world. I take myself to the fireplace of the word of God. Then I dive myself there. Then when God begins to pour new anointing into me, people look at me and say, wow, such an anointed person. But guess what? You pass through the water and fire. It's not easy to make an old wine skin to become a new wine. Your next level is a new wine skin. You want new wine to flow into you? Then you must be. You must make yourself available to allow God's word to soak you. And when you soak that leather, I didn't really like it. It looks as if it's useless. But you take it to fireplace, then you dry it. It has become a new wine skin. So when you say change your container, change your container. It's not a container we are changing. God does not want to change you. God wants to work on you. That some of us, God will send you to some places where they will work on you and train you. Because some of us, we are not properly raised. Did you know the Israelites spent 430 years when God said they will be there for 400 years? What happened? In the middle of it, Moses erred. Moses took a wrong step. Moses delayed them. If you notice, it was 10 years to recovery when Moses took the step. Moses went ahead of God. And Moses was in the house of Jethro for 40 years to learn what he was supposed to learn that he didn't learn before the 
before that 10 years. So God said, no. This issue in Moses, we need 40 years to raise him. In other words, that old wine skin was sent to the house of Jethro to enter water and enter fireplace before God can put a new wine into him. There are many things God wants to take from you. Fasting, we take it. In the place of fasting, some things we drop. And 430 years, they spent extra. The prophecy came again when the children of Israel sinned against God. And God said they will be in Babylon for 70 years. I was said, one day, Daniel began to pray. And Daniel found out in the book that the prophecy was that they would be in the in, in Babylon for 70 years. Before 70, you know what Daniel did? Daniel declared fasting. And began to fast. And angel came and brought revelation to Daniel that you're supposed to be in this place for 70 years. Do you know they didn't spend up to 70 years? Because a man stepped into it and collapsed time in fasting and prayer. See, there are many things you are going through that fasting and prayer can switch eternity and bring it into time. In the time of Moses, nobody to pray. In the time of Daniel, Daniel stood in God. That problem in your family, you can put an end to it by yourself. And say, this thing will not continue. How about Nehemiah? Nehemiah unlocked the door of favor. Beg your pardon. By fasting. He just heard that the wall of Jerusalem was destroyed. The next thing he declared fast. And as he was appearing before the king the following day, the king noticed something. The king, what the king had never noticed, fast and brought it. Nehemiah, what happened to you? Ah. Ah. He's not even supposed to say, so, 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 thing happened to me. He just opened his mouth. Don't forget, Bible says when he had, he went to pray. Then the king asked him, what did you want? That guy's name was written in the Bible because of that act. How did he enter into that circle? Fasting. Ezra went to meet the king. They gave him everything he needed. Imagine they gave you one billion dollars to go and work. And they gave you cash. And you are traveling from here to Portacot. One billion dollars. Ezra carried the money and left palace. Ah! And everybody told him, where are we going to pass? <laughs> Bandits on the way. We will not get to Portacot before they collect all these things in our hand. Do not say, Ezra, you know what? Go and meet the king and ask for army escort so that they will escort us. That's normal. Shouldn't Ezra just go back and say, Oh, king, thank you very much. Um, give us escort because we don't want this thing to be hijacked. You know what Ezra said? Ezra said, No. I have told the king that the hand of our God is mighty upon us. If I return back to the king, hope the king will not say, Can't your God protect the money? I was now said, and I declare fast day at the river of Alpha, asking God for the way for us and our children. But we say, and He heeded us, He answered us. So God showed them where to pass. Pass here, there will not be robbers on the way. Pass here, there will not be robbers on the way. That was how they got to the land of Israel without an escort, with that volume of money they carried. You can fast for every detail of your life. Why is pastor making big deal out of nothing? This issue of fasting, let's drop it and face all that is. Maybe that is what you need for the next level. Maybe. What required blood? You don't give it palm oil, palm oil because the two are red. Do you know some people, three days fasting has put an end to the trouble of your life? Three. If the first time Peter spoke, 3,000 people gave their life to Christ and God told them, take their attendance. How did they know that there are 3,000 there? The next time, 5,000. The next time, I would say, no, what to do without them? In other words, they try to count. God loves numbers so much. There's a book in the Bible titled Numbers. Even say I will multiply your number exceedingly. Good 
The pastor have been fasting. I've been fasting. If it's this fasting, me and the fast though. Maybe you don't fast right. Or you think every problem is fasting problem. You know some people, they have a way they think. Somebody is going to go and misbehave, misbehave, or you break fast. You went to boyfriend's house to break your fast there. So dear, you went to another heaven, you come back. You now say you are fasting. You are just doing longer strike. If you read Isaiah 58, it tells us the fast he chose to deal your bread with the hungry. He said, then your righteousness. Then your righteousness. When will you be righteous if not during fasting? Then your righteousness. You lie, lie, lie during fasting. It's fasting, but it can't stop you from lying. You now say it's not working. How can it work? You pump balloon, you use your own hand to deflate it. You now say the ball is not bouncing. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now in fasting, you must learn how to pray. In fasting, you must learn how to do what? And we must all understand what prayer is. Prayer is not until you kneel down. For some people, Forget posture. You must need that. Even though you may want to. Mark Lev. I think one of the first things you must be delivered from is prayer of religion. Eh? What do I call it? Religious way of praying. We do that a lot in the former church I attended. We have all kinds of prayer. We have Adura Dakeje. Did you know in the Bible, covering of hair has nothing to do with prayer. It's worship. And what it represents to, is to a woman who is married. It's a sign of worship to her husband. It's not, it has nothing to do with prayer. That when you want to pray, you must cover it. Even where it mentions it, it doesn't even say in the area of prayer. So understand you don't pray religiously. Because these are the things that we do that makes us think we have done what is right in the sight of God. Some people see those who wear trousers as a sinner. But those who wear skirts, they are righteous. So you can be wearing skirts and be lying. Or cheat and follow boyfriend, but you are righteous. It's not putting no ring in your nose that, make, that defiles you. You can see somebody who put no, nose ring and say, hey, mm, this one, they are going to hell. Me, I don't use to plate my hair. Natural. I'm going to heaven. Spirit don't have hair. Oh, did I touch button? You know somebody died. Somebody said he died. He, he now went to go and do tape. The tape rain. My, my wife reminded me of that. The tape rain. It was raining everywhere. The person said, he, he God show him hell. Show her hell. And in air, she saw some people in air. Do you know why those people are in air? Said they wore trouser. Because of trouser, that's where they went to air. Say some people, they, they did braided air. That is when they went to air. Some people, airing was what took them to air. So, the news was not everywhere. I think my mother-in-law even have to warn my wife. <laughs> You're a pastor's wife. This thing, reduce it. Are you sure? Do you know why people, they don't understand? Does spirit carry bread? What goes to air? Is it this your body? The body that has rot inside coffee. Is it the one that carried bread to heaven? They didn't see right. They saw rubbish. Do you know spirit does not even have gender? Oh, talk to me, somebody. So who did they see? They can't see us as male and female. So you're the one Lord, bread fire because of bread. Do you know when it becomes a problem? Apostle Paul said, he said, don't let your adornment be merely out what? He didn't say don't adorn it. He didn't say don't look beautiful. He said he didn't say don't use perfume. 
He said, don't let it be merely. In other words, don't spend your time focusing on your body. You want to do makeup. You want to do this. You want to do that. He said, but let it be more on the inner man of the heart. In other words, work on your character. Work on your attitude. The way you speak, you don't know how to speak. Some of you, if you talk, they want to slap you. You don't know how to talk to elders. He said, work on that area. Work on etiquette. Some people, you don't have etiquette. You call yourself a child of God. Rather, see, no, 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 no. Come back. God bless you. Don't let you adopt. Oh, let's start from verse 1. I wish I have time and answer your questions. Wives, watch you. Be submissive to who? Your own husband. That even if some do not even obey the word of God, without word, because of your character, they will be won by the conduct of the wives. In other words, if a man is not born again, and it's the, woman, eh, the husband is not born again, the wife attends the years. The way, the way the woman behaves at home, the husband will look like, oh, I want to be born again. Who convicts you? My wife. Let the character of a woman convict, not the sharp matter. Your husband is not teaching. Is this what pastor is teaching you in church? Oh, he born up. Is this what pastor is teaching you in church? <laughs> you see the meaning of that? A man can be won by the character of the wife. When they observe your chaste conduct and what? Accompanied by fear. Do not let your adornment watch you. Do not let your adornment be what? Be merely. What is the meaning of merely? Don't just focus only. Focus on it. Oh. If you don't focus on it, your husband will leave the house for you. What matters? Watch. What matters is not your outer appearance. The styling of your hair. It is a don't style the hair. The styling of your hair. The jewelry you wear. So it is a don't wear jewelries. For some people who say, ah, anybody that wear gold is going to air. Go, say, go and ask them for their gold. Where did they build the first temple from? From their earrings. If you can afford it and you like it, wear what you like. If you can afford diamond, you like it, wear diamond. See, as a man, I don't wear all those things. And the reason I don't wear all those things, I just want to appeal to all people. Not because if I wear it, I will go to hell fire. Amen? Please be seated. I will say everything you do, must, you must do with moderacy. Huh? You must be moderate. Not that I appear now, I'm doing do shine, 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 shine. Everybody look at, ah. Instead of you to not focus on what, you are, what I'm saying, you are focusing on my chin. That's wrong. Where is it? The styling of your hair, the jewelry you wear, the cut of your clothes. Maybe you must not look, you must not be too stylish or too heavy that people are looking like, ah, ah man of God, a woman of God. He said, but your inner disposition, cultivate inner beauty. Character is part of what leads to answer to prayer. Character, character, etiquette, character. Some people are nailed that cannot carry something in front of you. You can say, bring it. They are sweeping in front of you. You can say, excuse me, let me do it. Work on yourself. It's scriptural to be gentle. Don't be lousy. If you talk too much, learn to. Don't say, that's who I am. I like talking. Bible says gentleness. Cultivate it. Cultivate it. Gracious. Kind. Bible says that God the lights. Can we read verse 5? That would say the holy women of old were beautiful before God. They were not beautiful before men. It is men that look at your makeup. But we say they were beautiful before God. That way. And they were good, loyal wives to their husbands. Sarah, for instance, taking care of Abraham, who addressed him as my dear. If you read it in KJV translation, it calls him Lord. How many women can call their husband Lord? Curious. Is, is the person that is talking to you, they are talking about that is Lord to you? I would say, whose daughter are you? If you do good and are not afraid, I don't know who I'm sent to to mention this path.
You can't substitute fasting and prayer for good character. That was why I navigated to that path. You can't be fasting and be behaving anyhow. That your old wine skin must become a new wine skin. You must allow the word of God to penetrate into you and shape on you. Let people see you as it is a child of God. Let's go to Mark 11. Really, if you want to live a life of distinction, you must stand out. You must do what? Do you know there are people that you can't trust them with your ATM card? Even if they see the front. And there are people you can put it in their hand and say, go and let me withdraw money. Can they trust you with things? Then there's a speedy answer. Because both the one that God sees and the one that man sees is correct. How can you carry an offering in your hand to God when you are dirty? He will hear you. So I'm deliberately talking about this. Nobody is perfect. You're working on yourself. But make sure you are working on yourself. And don't accept that this is who I am. If they say you talk too much, work on it. There's no way you talk too much and you will not gossip. There's no way you talk too much and you will not lie. Because you will add to it. Or you will exaggerate. Exaggeration is a lie. Uh, what, what, what? It's not as hard as that. Calm down. If you see what happened in Masika today, he can just came few. He just crushed that. He didn't crush the guy. He hit the bike. Stop exaggerating. You can't exaggerate and God will answer your prayers. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. That's what the Bible instructs. You keep money in your hand, you say you borrowed it. You lack integrity. I was in between life and death. Oh, so if you don't take the money, you will die. Then you better die having integrity. I used it. I will pay it back. And they are now asking, you, hey, what's what? What did I say? I will not pay it back. That's why God can bless you. And the same you say you are fasting. No? Don't be a Muslim. Oh. They will go and do terrible things and think fasting and prayer will be answer to it. And evening, everybody will be breaking with oranges. When you are defrauding somebody in the morning. Purity, righteousness is key in answer to prayer and fasting. Go read it in Isaiah 58. Your righteousness will go forth before you. Your righteousness will go forth before you. Your righteousness we go forth before you. We've had the fasting and prayer and a brother, the, day of, the last day of the fasting, his sister visited him and then they went to Zambiza. That sister is lost today. Only grace can bring her back. Stay where God placed you. Enjoy what God gives you. The privilege attached to your office or wherever you find yourself, stay in your boundary. Enjoy it. Give thanks for anything apportioned to you. Don't, don't be covetous. You know, I've come to realize that in the season when parents are depriving you of things, it's training. A time will come you don't have to take permission to go take things. I remember all those times we got to a secondary school, especially university. We don't have to take permission to take tea. You don't take permission to say, Mommy, can I take tea? You feel so mature. In fact, Mommy, we look like, if you even know as you look at you, I say, Why are you asking? But there was a time. In other words, before you come to a level, there are things they must put in you first. 
Don't expect people to pour themselves into you if you have not proven trustworthy. Shall I say that again? Don't expect people to put their all to you now if you have not proven trustworthy. It takes time to trust people. And in your season, when they are looking at you, whether you are trustworthy, then you better behave well. Or else you can lose the opportunity forever. Maybe I should have called it character development during fasting. Repent of what you have done that is wrong. Apologize. Say, I'm sorry. Don't be arrogant. Arrogance give nobody nothing. I would say resist the proud and give grace. The Bible recorded in the Bible as a servant. You stand before your you give him food, you stand beside him. If he finish eating the food, you will still be standing. You will pack the plate. You will go and do every other thing until your boss goes to sleep. You don't eat. It's that scripture. And that's how we rest kids sometimes. Until your dad goes to sleep, you don't, you don't say, eh, my time is up. You see some people. Eh, 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 eh. Have you ever seen people who are equating themselves with the people of the house? If you can deliver yourself with good character, ah, your journey in life will be faster. Do you know even in class, class, some lecturer knows some people that have bad character. Inside class, one hour that lecturers stay in class, some people have demonstrated their foolishness. Class, one hour. You are late, stand up. You are chewing gum. Who does it make? Chewing gum. They are talking to you. This is the way you, you fume. You, 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 you blew up like bread. You throw inside water. Maybe that is the way you do in your father's house. But when you give your life to Christ, Apostle Paul said, walk on that inner man. The Bible says that's what God takes delight in. So you can't go to the place of prayer with a bad character and God take delight in you. No. Is to teach all these things in church. Yes. Amen. So that if somebody wants to marry you, they will know they marry a full container. A full package. Beautiful inside and out. They lose you, they know they lose someone from the Lord. One sent from the Lord. And can I tell you something? All of us have something to work on. You are not a bad person. Maybe you have not just learned right thing. So pick up and learn. Let me just end. Let me leave Mark 11. We were traveling one day. I was traveling with a pastor. I don't even know what that's called in French. Was that traveling with someone? So the man asked me, now, ah, Pastor Richard. I said, yes. He said, so, so, so. I said, called him and he wanted to send him some, he wanted to drop something for him so that we take it to the person we are going to see. I said, okay, sir, don't collect it. Though. He said, ah, you can collect it. That, if they are friends now. That person we are going to see is his friend. I said, he want to give me something to give him. I said, okay. So he took this stuff. Imagine, um, Pastor Sam said, um, I'm coming to meet you. Um, Pastor Sam called me. Or someone, someone, I spoke to Pastor Sam. And Pastor Sam knew that I was coming to meet the person. I said, ah, ah, PR. Maybe let's imagine we're on the same level. Ah, PR. Oh, no. Pastor Sam, he, both of you are on the same level. Maybe I'm lesser. He now said, ah, Pastor PR. I said, yes, sir. He said, I said, I'm going to see your friends tomorrow. Oh, that's good. Or your brother, or whatever. But both of you are colleagues. Oh, can you tell us to give him for me? So I now collected this. I said, yes, sir. I will take it. She means your friend, I can take it. So I took it. And I met Pastor Viva. Pastor Viva now warned me that, ah, you collected something to give. Why? He said, ah, they are friends. Ah, I just collected something for him. No problem. We got to where we are going. They saw what the man carried. Ah, the wife of the man saw what he carried. Said, ah, where's this? Oh, I want to drop it for your husband. The friend said I should give it to him. The woman said, eh, you collected it for him. That means you told him you are coming here. Oh, oh, because I gave you access, that is why you can tell another person you are coming. He's gone. Why did I not, why did I not collect? 
David behaved himself wisely. It's not everything they teach you in school. Some people, even the one they are teaching you now, you are not learning. You will learn one day. That will slap. And if God slap you, it won't be a good slap. So you know if man slap you, your head can be correct. Bah! While he said. But when God slap you, God will slap you with experience that you will need years to correct. Do you know what gave me joy? The lady looked at me and said, I know this one won't do it. Do you know Tina? Is he apologizing? I see something the last time. He still went somewhere. We were still in that place. <laughs> he still went to meet you. Because he still has not believed. But I'm sure the, the person will have forgiven him. But guess what? There are things they can't expose him to. He has lost that position forever. They said, this one can't do it. This one can't do it. You better train yourself. Huh? You better do what? Can I say it again? Mentors has called me before and said, I know you can't do what this person did. You have lacked honor because of bad character. Favor is opening the door. Fasting is opening the door, but your character keeps closing them. How many doors has your fasting and prayer opened? But your character closed it. Some of you now, they just say, you can't walk here again. Eh, we are downsizing. They are not downsizing. They are downsizing you. Bow your head as you pray. Say, Father, instruct me adequately. You are fasting, you are keeping malice. How will God answer your prayer? Instruct me adequately. Can we pray a prayer? There's a prayer in my spirit. Father, don't watch me end up in destruction. Show me what I'm doing that is wrong. And when, when men point to it, I will accept it. Some people are too heady. Nobody can talk to them. They listen. They are not remorseful. You talk to them, they will be bold. They make mistakes. You point them to it, they will stick. Be proud over it. Lord, point me to what I'm doing wrong that you want me to pay attention to. And it's not for anybody to say, ah, maybe somebody reported me to pastor. They are using me to preach. No, I don't even have anybody. I'm just talking. I don't even want to go in this route. But how can God delight in me when my character it does not give God delight? I'm arrogant. He said there are three things God ate. Four is an abomination. One of them is proud. Look, look for it. In Jesus' name we pray. From verse 3. Ready, read. These six things the Lord was eats. In other words, six things oh, God eats it. Now I say, ah, yes. Seven. Is that seven one? Seven to one. God did not just eat it. It's an abomination. You must not do it. Let's go and count that. What's the first one there? Proud. What's the first one there, somebody? They didn't say you are proud, though. You look proud. You don't want to see you as a. Is it, I don't like that guy. Why? Is it, he looks proud. Because when you enter anywhere, this is the way you raise your shoulder. Proud look. Abomination. What is there again? A lying tongue. Hand that shed innocent blood. Don't have anything to do with abortion in your life, either you are married or not. Abortion is not allowed, even in marriage. To the married people. If you want to control childbearing, go do family planning. A heart that devises what? Devises evil plan, wicked plan. 
They don't see you where they make good plans, but where to destroy people, that's where you used to stay. Faith that are swift in all their life. A false witness. Ah, ah, who was there? The total person was there. When they happened, are you not there? Because he's your friend. I say, hey, yes, I'm there. A false witness. Who speaks lies. And one who sows discord. You see? You are spoiling the relationship between friends. One who sows discord among brethren. That should be the last one, right? Say in the name of Jesus. All of them will not be found in my life. Go ahead and turn into power. If God hates them, that means God will hate you if you do it. Please pray. Please pray. Are you praying? Say my focus is right. I'm not wasting my time in this fasting and prayer. How can I fast for 120 days and it will be a waste? Can they trust you with information that nobody will hear? Can they put this in your hand that nobody will know? In Jesus' name we pray. As you go, God will go with you. God will walk on your spirit. God will walk on your body. God will walk on your character. God will walk on your person. If there's anything bouncing you off the things that God has prepared, I decree and declare, let there be dominion now. You are there under the sound of my voice, watching or listening somewhere. And it feels like, did anybody talk to Pastor about me? Why is it this so direct at me today? Maybe it's a prophetic word that God is sending to you. I decree and declare, your life will be a fruit with these words. If you believe it, shout it loud, Amen. I said, your life will bear fruit with this word. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Is there anything God is putting his finger on? I said, I want you to walk on this area. I decree and declare. Receive a yieldedness of the spirit. Your heart is pliable. Your heart is open. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are praying.